Looking at this when you're trying to find one particular session replay from a user can be really frustrating. In this video, I'm going to show you how to associate a user to one particular set of user replays. That way you can look at this instead. We'll, we'll add like post effects, right? No. This is the list of anonymous sessions. As you can see, they're perfectly valid sessions and you can even replay them and experience what your users experience through using your application. However, the moment you start needing to identify a single user because you need to either replay one particular bug or figure out what one user is doing incorrectly in your application, you can't. There is no way for you to identify users by default. However, the Open Replay Tracker gives you three different ways in which you can identify your users. So we're going to be looking at that in this video. What I'm going to use for this example is a very basic application that asks for some data sends it to the backend and then shows the response back. The key here is that I'm going to be using the email address as the user ID. I could be using any of these fields, but I've chosen the email address because I know it'll help me identify my users uniquely across all session replays. With that out of the way, the first method we have to identify your users is through the code snippet that we can add on our head tag. If we're using that method to import the tracker, then we can go and click on the installation steps button. In there, if we click on the using script, we're gonna have the full script code for us to use. As you can see, there is a start options variable that has a user ID set to an empty string. If you have the user ID by the time you're inserting the script, then you can definitely use this method to identify it, simply replace the empty string by the user ID that you have. However, if you're using the MPN version of the tracker, you also can you take advantage of the configuration options on the start method. Here I'm showing you a basic project setup with a default tracker installed. You, I'm using the disable secure mode flag for me to be able to test it locally. Remember that if you do this, your CSS might not be fully recorded as part of the session. Just keep that in mind. Now, for me to be able to set the user ID when I call the start method, I can pass an object and set the user ID to whatever I want when I start the tracker. However, given the application that I'm going to be using right now, that use case is, does not apply to us because by the time the use effect callback gets executed and the start method is called, the email out of the user is not known yet. So the user ID cannot be set. For that, I'm going to be needing the third method that I'm going to show you right now. To understand this method, first we have to understand the logic behind the application. As you can see, when I click the save button, the save data function gets called. That function will capture the data from the uh, input elements and it will create a payload object and then send it via post method to an API endpoint that we've defined on the backend. In here, by this time, we already have the email address of the user. So we can set the user ID of the session using the set user ID method of the tracker, like so. Remember that the ID can be anything as long as it's a string. I'm gonna be using the email address, but I could be using anything else, really. Now I'm just going to quickly show you what the application does by testing it and then showing you how the replay, instead of appearing listed as an anonymous replay, appears under my email. I went ahead and recorded three sessions under the same email address, so you can see that they are now listed here. And if I click on them, I get to filter by user immediately. And if I go into the replay, and on the top left corner, you can see that my email address appears as well. If I click on it, I can immediately get access to all the other user session replays recorded without me having to go back into the list and filtering again. You can see here how I can navigate between sessions of the same user without me having to leave the replay screen. 
this is something that will come really handy if you're trying to go through a set of sessions of a user that is complaining about a bug or uh, if you're trying to understand exactly how one particular user is interacting with your system. And that's it. That's all you have to do to associate your users to your replays. Remember that the user ID that you use can be anything you want. I've used this email address in this example, but you can definitely use whatever you choose. As long as it's a valid string and it can uniquely identify your users for your convenience, then whatever you use is perfect. This is a very useful feature for searching purposes, so you can get to the replays that you care about much faster. And the other thing to remember is that you have three ways to identify your users. Two of them work if you know the user ID from the moment the tracker gets started and that is through the configuration of the code snippet or through the configuration options that you can pass to the start method of the tracker. If you don't know your user ID by the time the tracker starts, which is a very common use case, then you can use the set user ID method from the tracker whenever you want within the same session and set the ID then. Remember though that if you do it multiple times, the last ID that you set is the one that's going to show up on the session. So keep that in mind. If you have further questions or doubts about how to set the user ID, don't hesitate to reach out to us on our Slack channel with the link in the description and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Until then, catch you on the next one.